Hello and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjber and joining me on the show today I have world renowned film stills photographer Aidan Monaghan. Aidan, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so maybe if you could give our viewers a little bit of an insight into how you got started in photography. Okay, well nice to meet you Ruth and thanks for helping me along today. You're welcome. Um, I guess, um, I suppose I've always kind of made pictures funny from, from kind of an early age. I was kind of, kind of one of those kids who liked to kind of uh, make and paint and sketch. Probably a bit of a nightmare for kind of making a mess out in the garage and stuff like that, you know. So I kind of thought I was, I've always been very visual in terms of how I've learned, uh, as opposed to kind of learning by rote. And are you self-taught or did you, did you learn on the job shadowing somewhere else or did you just learn by yourself or did you go to school for it? Sure. Well, I'm kind of in, t in terms of photography, I'm self-taught. So my background was in, in, in architecture. Uh, and I think kind of there's a very similar strand of thought that exists through architecture and, and photography. Yeah. Uh, and, and kind of the core idea of it's a space, it's a concept, it's, it's how you light a space. Yeah. You know, things like that that are very very similar uh, and, and through my architectural education and through practice I always used photography to kind of to, 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 do, to explain ideas, to document ideas, to record and um, ultimately that led me to working full time as a photographer from around 2009. Uh, it, was it the architectural photography that first got you into photographing things? I mean because looking at your Architectural photography work is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. You kind of see your sense of space through it. Mm -hmm. Was that your jumping off point? Jumping off point in a way. I guess I'd always kind of been the person who, who you know, through studying, I would, I would travel to these buildings, I'd document them, I'd photograph them. Yeah. Uh, but also, um, and I guess it's a bit of a throwback to the days when I used to do paintings of people. I, I, I was doing a lot of theatre work in my spare time. So working with kind of um, playwrights in Belfast, uh, documenting and photographing their plays cool. uh, and doing their publicity work for them. Wow. So it, it kind of came to a point where with with the kind of recession of 2008-9 that it, it kind of made sense for me to kind of look this is a jumping off point let's see where photography takes me. And so you would have had a bit of a background a bit of kind of an introduction into the theatre and into the mm -hmm. acting kind of world. Is that how you started to move into the film stills? Yes, that, that kind of led me, um, I guess, towards my first job, which was a short film called The Shore, directed by Terry George. Oh. Uh, and his daughter, Order George, was also a producer on that. And I remember sending my CV in at the time, which, which did have a mix of landscape architecture, but also the theatre work. Mm. And one of the things she commented on was the landscape work. Um, mm. And specifically because the shore uh, was very much a kind of landscape-based uh, piece of film because it takes place on a tidal inlet, inlet mm. in, in a place called Kinloch, County Down. So the guys are out picking mussels on this tidal inlet. So the, the rhythm of the whole shoot kind of tied in with when the tide was in and the tide was out. Yeah. So, in many ways, an understanding of landscape and light was a massive part of that film. I see. So they preferred your work over someone else that might have had maybe more experience shooting theatrical sets because you had an understanding of everything else, of the landscape. I guess, I guess so. It's, it's something that, that I really commented on. Uh, yeah. And that kind of got me my first kind of break into the world of film. And the, the interesting thing was... Um, the Shore, what, a year later, won the, the best uh, Oscar, Oscar for the best short film wow. in 2011. So so you had that on your CV now? That was a nice, <laughs> yeah, and it, it just kind of came together in a way, in, in, that, in that sense. So. And did it just snowball since then? I guess you, you kind of, with how the film industry's evolved uh, in Ireland and in Northern Ireland, um, uh, people have begun to look at um, here is a, as a really good place to shoot um, and so you, you, you kind of st you start off and you kind of work on shorts um, I worked uh, and then you get kind of uh, effectively low budget features that, that build uh, and over time you kind of build up that confidence and portfolio and the knowledge and an etiquette of of working on set because set is a, is a world where 
you, you have to learn and you have to observe, particularly as a stills photographer, um, because you, you're brought in as, um, I guess your role is to kind of observe, document, mm. and to try and capture the kind of key shots that, that help you define what the film is about. Wow, so it's kind of like documentary almost in that you're standing back and observing and then... There, there, is, a, there is a bit of that. Um, uh, you can almost appro approach it like a photo essay wow. in a way. One aspect is to catch those key shots mm. within the scene uh, that, that try and define the essence of what the film is about. Wow. Uh, they capture the public's imagination. You know, and, you, and, you, and of all the thousands of shots that you'll shoot, you'll have a handful of shots that, that are just, they just bang, they just shine out. Uh, when you're working on set then, do you interrupt the flow of things to go, can I just take that shot? Like, do you, do you stop things or are you shooting while things are in action? How, how, how do you get your shots? You largely try to avoid to interrupt the kind of flow of, of the, of the on-set shoot. Where you can, you're working silently uh, yeah. with, with a silent shutter mm. and, and work in the scene. You have to be kind of un, as unobtrusive as you can. There has to be times as well where you, you would obviously interrupt things, right? There are certain times when you, when you, again, it's all about getting into that rhythm and seeing how people work, how directors operate and, and the speed and pace at which they work at. So there will be little moments of lull in and between can... setups. And that's your, I guess that's your opportunity to, 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 grab, get, someone. to grab someone or, or ask, mind, do you mind if I get that shot of you? doing that or in this position or in this costume. Would, and you, so, yeah, would you do this again for me kind of yeah, stuff? Oh, yeah. okay. So and there are little moments. Yeah. But it's, 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 the skill is timing those moments. Yeah. And seeing which are the important moments um, to capture from that. Absolutely. The, the other aspect of that as well, where you'll, you'll do what are called setups or specials. Okay. And those are, those are usually either, for instance, within um, the context of um, shooting for the poster image. Sure. So in, in that instance, you'll be working to a brief. There'll be sometimes a concept sketch of poses and, and concept of what they, they want to come across in terms of the poster. Uh, and that'll be a much more controlled environment where it's, it's like a studio setup. So you're lighting that, you've got your backdrop and you've, you've maybe got an hour, 45 minutes, sometimes less with the actor, it just depends. Wow. Um, and those, those, are, those will be a set list that will be agreed. And then there's always that kind of human interaction that you don't expect. And then, and then within that interaction, you suddenly get that shot that just shines, you know? Uh, and that's another aspect of, of my job. I suppose it falls into kind of three categories. There's the, the first kind of key part, which is the um, film-based side of it. So you're working within the context of the set, within the scene, as the actors do what they do. The other aspect is the, the documentary side, the almost photo essay of that, those kind of lovely behind the scenes shots, where you kind of capture those little moments where either the director is, is, is talking to the actors or those kind of completely, you know, just magic moments where someone kind of throws a little look or, or does something. You're always kind of aware, you're, trying, you're almost, in your reaction to be a little bit like a coiled spring because those impromptu moments, you see them, they're gone. So you almost have to be ready to snap those. But when they do work, you'll, you'll find that you've got some of the most memorable images in terms of what you'll see later, reproduced years later. Yeah. Um, and then the third aspect, which is the, what I just talked about, which is the, the still setup for, for either a poster or publicity shot. Fantastic. Well, that's all we have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please join me again for part two, where I'm going to be chatting to Aidan some more. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, then check out the Adorama Learning Centre. And if you'd like to watch more videos, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.